All right. Good morning. Almost afternoon. Um, it's finally here. Uh, it's game week. And as I said yesterday, uh, this doesn't ever get old. The excitement, the anticipation uh, is real. Our guys have uh, worked incredibly hard uh, for the last eight months, coaches and players, uh, preparing for this. This is kind of what you work for. And so it's exciting time um, for the 22 team. Uh, team 128 uh, couldn't be more excited to just go watch them play. Um, it's that time to go play somebody else, to go compete, and um, kind of see where we're at. So um, got UTEP coming in here, as we've said all, all along as well. It's, really, it's about us. And um, you know, a, a veteran team's coming in here uh, from El Paso. Um, but I, I really want to see our guys uh, compete, you know, to the standards of uh, Oklahoma football you know, with uncommon effort and toughness and discipline, physicality, uh, to play the game the right way in all three phases. Uh, excited to see a bunch of uh, young guys we have. I believe it's uh, over 50% of our roster has never been in a, in a, a Sooner football game. So that's exciting um, to us. I know there's been a, uh, a bunch of freshman guys that just got here um, that are in that too deep as well. Um, but from the, the transfers and the freshmen and then guys that maybe have been here uh, in the past uh, prior to um, January uh, that haven't been in a game as well. So uh, that's exciting to me. Um, to get an opportunity to mold them and shape them and see them go compete for the first time out here in this stadium is a really uh, neat thing to be a part of. But uh, I'm going to open it up for, for questions. Um, you know, I know you'll have plenty of UTEP questions, so I don't want to be redundant. I'll, I'll answer those when you all ask. Okay, we'll start with Eric Bailey. Brent, I'm going to ask you, a lot of fans remember you from your time here with Mike. It's your passion and energy on the sidelines. We saw that at Clemson as well. When you look back at your coaching career, when did that begin? How did that start? Has that always just been you? Um, I, I was that way as a player. I think that's um, you got to find a way to uh, create value for yourself. And uh, I wasn't the most talented, so I just did it with effort and attitude and uh, just uh, always tried to go above and beyond when it comes to um, uh, emotion and passion and intensity. Uh, Jim Levitt um, at Kansas State, my, my linebacker coach, uh, was a very passionate football coach, and uh, he demanded that from us as players. And so he really nur nurtured that and promoted that. And um, that's always who I've been. And when you love what you do, um, I think that shows. And um, so for me, that was the way I was as a player. and. Uh, as a coach, um, I think it comes from a thankfulness, having uh, gratitude um, for whatever opportunity that you have as well. So passion is, is genuine love for what I do. And uh, and again, just having a, a thankfulness, um, uh, I think, is what you see as well. And I'm, when it comes to the coaching aspect, I never have wanted to let my players down, ever. And so some of that uh, focused intensity is it's for them and and then the colleagues that I work with as well trying to uh, deliver you know on my responsibilities and I'm just uh, from an expression standpoint I'm just uh, very outwardly uh, in my uh, in my passions and so I don't apologize for it it's not for everyone and uh, but that's that's who I am so uh, you know that's who I've been since I've been here you know, with, with my guys, honest, open, transparent, uh, enthusiastic, uh, passionate, and uh, again, make no apologies for that. Thanks, Brent. Mm -hmm. Ryan Aver. Yeah, Brent, over the last uh, few years, it seems like attitudes toward smaller quarterbacks have changed a little bit mm -hmm. and become more accepting. Uh, how, how have you seen that uh, evolve since you, you began coaching, and why do you think that is? Well, I think. I think whoever, I don't know, Doug Flutie was that guy way back in the day. Uh, but uh, somewhere along the line, I think uh, collegiately, um, the uh, smaller, uh, whether it was Johnny Manziel or uh, the guys that maybe weren't, you know, tall in stature in the pocket, started having incredible success. Um, obviously, guys that don't, you know, 
uh, have a lot of length. They, they're probably more of a dual threat, and they've had incredible success. So people have become more um, accepting of that um, from a recruiting standpoint, looking for that, guys that have all the intangibles, that know how to win, that, again, throw with anticipation. They're accurate. They can extend plays, keep their eyes down the field, tough to you know, to, to handle. And uh, the better teams that have struggled uh, against quarterbacks like that um, have probably promoted the idea that, okay, maybe it's okay to not go look, you know, for the prototypical, uh, you know, measurements, measurables. And what is it about Dylan specifically? Ticked off some of those traits, but again, for me, um, as a as a defensive coach, uh, the ones that um, they're incredibly accurate. Um, those are. Uh, that's a gift. You can get better, but accuracy is a is a, to me is a natural uh, trait. Again, I coach linebackers, so there might be a thousand quarterback coaches tell me I'm crazy. So, but that's I think accuracy um, is a is an instinctive thing. It's a natural gift. Uh, throwing with anticipation and uh, you know creating opportunities for guys, but throwing in the windows where you know they're going to open before they open. Um, and then all the, the intangibles from a toughness, decision making, uh, ball security. Some guys are just loose with the ball naturally. And then there's other guys that they always know how to fall. They always know how to throw it away. They always know um, uh, when they can take their chances and when they don't. So Dylan has a lot of uh, intangibles that um, you certainly promote and try to nurture, but they also come very natural for him. Uh, great pocket presence and awareness, can extend plays. Um, he's one of the unique quarterbacks that uh, he can certainly run with it and move the chains and frustrate a defense, but he also keeps his eyes down the field. And, uh, you know, you can go down a list of them, the quarterbacks that you have faced in the past that, all right, this guy was a scrambler to run, this guy was a scrambler uh, to pass. Vince Young, you didn't ever want to cover everybody because then he would, he'd make you pay, you know. Uh, and I'd much rather him throw the ball. He was a good thrower too, but I, I, once he gets loose, it's a wrap. So, um, but Dylan's a guy that can do um, that can do both, and and then he's got a humility and a competitiveness uh, that shows up every single day. And and so from a leadership standpoint, that's a those are all great qualities to have in your locker room. And uh, as we all know, that doesn't always happen that way. And uh, so we're we're proud of Dylan. And uh, the the way he's led us and got us to to uh, to our opener here, I'm thankful that he believed in us. We had a very uh, literally uh, minutes away from uh, for for him to have to make a decision without him visiting. Uh, we did a Zoom call. <clears throat> it was a kind of a pressure field Zoom call, and uh, he had to make the call. Um, and just thankful that he did. Mm -hmm. Hey, Bram. I wanted to ask you about your defensive ends. Ethan Downs talked to us yesterday about how he's comfortable that anybody in that room could get in the game and have success. Just what, what have you seen from them in the last few weeks, and how do you feel about the position group heading into the weekend? I like their mindset. I like that we've got, we've got good length to us there, um, learning how to play physical. Ethan's probably the most physical of that group. Uh, it's a group that's hungry, that's got great awareness where they're at and where they need to uh, what their weaknesses are, and uh, so they have a, uh, you know, awareness, and then the action that you need to to make improvement. Uh, humble, let you coach them. Um, a group that can again run, um, shown the propensity to play both the run and the pass. So it's a hungry group that's got a good edge to them. That uh, they're in a confident space right now, and uh, and they've got tremendous upside as a group as well. You know, so I'd expect that that's a group like really both sides of the ball. I expect, you know, great improvement as the season goes along. Far right side, John. Brent, I'm interested in uh, learning more about your defensive backs and how you guys came to the conclusions on certain guys at certain positions when they're clearly there's some players who have played other positions and now they're playing new positions, that kind of thing. How difficult was that as a coaching staff to say, okay, we like what you did at corner. We like what you did at safety. That kind of thing. And just finding those five. Yeah, I mean that, that's our job as coaches to to try to identify, you know, within our scheme, you know, find what a player can do, what he can't do, put him in position to be successful. 
Um, I've never been afraid of uh, projecting a guy at a, at a new spot. Um, you got to try to use, utilize the, your best football players and see if it's a natural fit. And so that's part of it. Um, uh, you know, some of the things from when we first got here in the spring to where we're at right now, you've kind of discovered, again, uh, once we had the litmus test of actual playing uh, and competing day in and day out, uh, and then really defining the strengths and the weaknesses of the different players, trying to find a way to kind of mix it all together. So uh, if you have somebody specifically, I can address that. Some of it is based on, too, who was and wasn't available. We, you know, not everybody was quote unquote healthy all fall camp, like most camps, I'm sure. And so uh, some of that was um, where guys are maybe on a depth chart is that's kind of what they earned because they, they, they may not have been available uh, much at all. But uh, but I'll answer whatever. So the, fir the first question about Jaden Davis um, might be a surprise to some people, but he had a great camp. I guess he's worked his way up to number one there at that corner. I would just ask, what, who who are they surprised? Who did who did they expect? You know, that's the first thing I would say. Who who they? Who, I'm sorry. DJ, DJ Graham. Yeah, um, Jaden. Jaden was you know he's really consistent. You know he's playing uh, confidently, uh, tackles well. And uh, in his, has been, you know, one of our most consistent players through fall camp. I'm seeing a little bit of a difference in body style too. Is there a field position and a boundary mm -hmm. position, or is it going to be right and left? I don't really. Um, I'm, we just look for football players, you know. Um, so body style sometimes, uh, you know, you want to again put a guy. If if a guy can't do certain things, then you need to try to protect those things, but. Right now, we haven't looked at it that way. And I think first and foremost, you've got to look for left and right. You know, guys that can play either side, you know, in both the field and the boundary. So that, that would be ideal so that you don't, you know, uh, no pun intended, but you don't corner a guy into doing just certain things. Uh, if they can do what, what both the field and the boundary do, that's what you would ideally like. And so we've cross-trained all of them uh, to do that. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, Brent, you talked a lot about the process. So going into the season, is there anyone that you know you're going to redshirt at this point or with the four-game rule, is that just something that's going to evolve as time goes, goes on? Yeah, I think it's early. You know, we're, we're not – we've got a little more depth at some positions, but across the board, I don't think that we have the, the depth to say with certainty today, you know, before we play our first game that, okay, these guys are definitely redshirting. Um, not, not really there. I want our guys to know, just like when we had uh, Quentin Griffin back uh, in 1999, and <clears throat> you know Quentin started off on the scout team, and then whatever it was, game four or five, maybe even six. I mean, he had been just blistering the number one defense down on the scout team, uh, big play after big play after big play, and we had a couple guys get banged up, so um, we we're like the. The guy that you need to bring out a red shirt is, is is Quentin, and and sure enough, he 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 uh, comes in there and does incredibly well. Everything he was doing on the scout team, he was doing uh, in the games. So, I mean, there's countless examples, but it, we're just too early right now. Uh, we got to have a scout squad right now. Uh, some got some. There's veterans on those scout squads uh, today, and there's some freshmen on there as well. And uh, but. Like I've challenged all of them, you have an opportunity to change your, uh, you know, where you're at and in what your opportunities are uh, in regards to the um, to the team by by how you practice every day. You know, you're certainly not going to get out of there, uh, come off the scout team if you're moping around, you know, and uh, wasting your opportunity to get better every day. So that's a long-winded way to to say that we're not we're not there yet. And um, you do have to be calculated on the ones that you think may redshirt. You just don't know, though. Uh, again, uh, we could get a guy hurt at linebacker, you know, in a, in a heartbeat. And uh, as as you know, you probably seen the roster like everybody else, and know immediately a, a three becomes a two and a two becomes a one. So um, that's part of the reason why we tried to cross train some guys uh, as well to create depth um, at a few positions that we're, we don't feel. Uh, that we have great depth. James Hale. 
Brett, talk about your linebacking situation. You know, White at the Cheetah, Justin there. You tried a lot of guys there, or you talked about a lot of guys that you tried to work there. So could you talk about you know how you got what, your final decisions to get guys where they were? Yeah, just again trying to find a way to put our best football players on the on the field and where they're most comfortable based on their skill set. And um, so uh, our, our cheated position is like it's always been. It's the same exact position. Uh, again, as I've said before, I've had uh, Isaiah Simmons, 6'4", 245. Uh, Nick Harris, 6'4", 240 pounds. Keenan Clayton, 6'2", 215. Clint Ingram, 6'2", 244. Uh, and we've had Ryan Carter when we were at Clemson, uh, who's one of our GAs on our defensive staff that was 5'9", 170. And, uh, or Tony Jefferson, or uh, countless others. Um, so, uh, Lewis Baker and uh, Joseph Ibaloy. Ibolo um, uh, I'm trying to think who else was some other names that. So, these are guys, if you look at, at Deshaun and, and um, uh, Justin uh, as well, as guys like, uh, you know, Justin Broyles. Uh, and Trey Morrison, there's there's a foursome uh, there. You know, some different body types, some similarities, not so similarities, but looking for football players. I mean, play in space, it can cover man, play zone, uh, it can uh, blitz, set the edge, play with awareness. Uh, so uh, you want you want to be able to keep you know you want to be able to keep guys out there without getting to a sub package. Uh, and, and you know, I'd have to protect a bunch of weaknesses, things that they can't do, uh, that aligns with your game plan. So um, that's kind of how we got to whatever we got, you know, trying to find ways for your best football players to get on the field. And those, and they, those aren't the <clears throat> only positions. Uh, all four of those guys play multiple positions. And uh, Trey Morrison started 44 games as, you know, a safety and a and a cheetah, both, but played a lot of safety. Um, Justin Broyles has played everywhere as well, and um, and then Deshaun uh, has played multiple linebacker positions. Who else got a cheetah court? Anybody else got to get cheetah off their chest? Huh? Seems to be a pretty popular question, concern, or confusion. Uh, it's like confusion. I'm, we're not confused. Uh, but I want to clear the air. I have no cheetah question. Sorry, Brent. Um, I actually wanted to ask you, eight months on the job, I'm sure there's a lot of things you could say. I'm, pr I'm proud of the way I did this as, as a first-time head coach. But what are the things that you'd like to do better moving forward as a head coach? What, what do you feel like you need to get better at as the head coach of this program? Just be patient. Um, I'm not naturally a patient person. And so i got to talk to myself instead of listen to myself. Like probably most of us in whatever those spaces are. That's probably my number one thing. Things can never happen fast enough for me, and, but I can't show frustration through that. I can certainly be uh, anxious, but I, I need to always be aware that, you know, how I do what I do matters too. And so whether that's uh, dealing with fans or administration or media or players or coaches, you know, I got I to gotta do a good job of setting the tone. Uh, and patience is something that uh, I'm not great at. So there's one. If you keep asking, you might find out like nine other uh, weaknesses. But that's probably my number one thing. Okay. Second row of Brent, do you think you have a pretty good idea of what game day is going to be like? Uh, have you reached out to Davo, Bob, or Coach Snyder? to get a sense of what you're up against, and just in terms of the game day responsibilities, that kind of stuff? Yeah, um, I have have visited with not all of them, but I have visited, uh, not in the last couple of days, but uh, in the past. And of course, I got Matt Wells on staff um, that's been a head coach. And so that's one of the reasons, um, uh, amongst others, that we uh, you know, like the idea of bringing him on board. Like he, he could help. It's another, you surround yourself with with experience and wisdom um, and always willing to learn. So, you know, it'll until you go through it, I'm, I can imagine nobody has had to tell me that, you know, until you go through it, uh, you know, you don't really 
no, but again, you just, it's football and you're in a leadership position. I feel like I've been that, uh, a, a little bit different role in some ways and, and some the same, the exact same. And, but you gotta be aware of everything going on in regards to management. And uh, uh, so, as opposed to being on that whiteboard until somebody tells you that you, it's time for the defense to go back out. You know, that, that's gonna be different, but I, there's gonna be times when I need to be on a whiteboard just because that's what I wanna do. And, uh, but I gotta, I gotta manage the whole team too and in the game itself. And again, I'm relying on other people to help in that management, but ultimately it's my responsibility. And uh, so that's, I'm, I'm incredibly excited about it. Um, we've uh, gone through our mock uh, games, and, but nothing is gonna be like the actual game day itself. Because it's such a results-driven mm-hmm. business, is, is Saturday gonna be the most important thing you've done since you've been here? I don't know, I, I wouldn't. I don't know, maybe to other people, but for me, no. Uh, the success is a byproduct of everything else that we've been, uh, you know, um, implementing and, and working on, you know. And I've always been like that, whether I'm, I'm a head coach or the success you have on defense, winning the game is, it's like really, it's like, it's like just an add-on, you know. For me, uh, it's, it's the chase, it's the, it's the journey, it's the grind. Uh, that's what prepares you. Uh, and everything else, and, and everything else, t- to be quite honest, should be uh, much easier uh, because of the of the work that you've put in on the front end and the preparation. And we've worked to prepare for what all the organization and the details of and the uh, the semantics of what game day looks like. Um, we've worked hard on on that as well. So there will be things that come up, just like in every other area that um, we've you go through throughout a calendar year uh, running a football team that you come up and you're like, okay, that was great and that wasn't so good. And we've tried to <clears throat> think everything through and then we're going in there in some ways, like, hey, well, let's try it this way and let's see how we like it. Uh, so we may not be necessarily surprised by something that we, we change course on. Um, but I mean, it's everything from where exactly we put those benches and, uh, you know, in relation to all the other things that are on the, a very cramped sideline. You know, we got a cramped sideline here, right? It's a very cramped area to work with, comparatively speaking. Anybody notice that ever? Should do, that's a good story, you know? How do you, how do you manage? Uh, you got to make a lot of decisions, like how many guys actually get a suit out. You'd like to reward everybody. Uh, you may not be able to because um, the efficiency or the lack thereof, uh, when you've got a, uh, a crowded, um, sideline and a group, maybe a small percentage that aren't going to necessarily be a part of the main, you know, part of the uh, game day, and are they going to be a distraction? You know, uh, so you want to be efficient too. Those are all things that you have to go through and figure out. Second row, Cliff Bruns. Yeah, thank Coach up here. Uh, UTEP obviously coming off of a uh, loss to North Texas, uh, close first to have had their moments. Did anything jump out at you, stand out to you, about things that they do well uh, that can maybe concern you a little bit? I'm um, just confirmation for what we saw. They're, you know, they're a bowl team. Dana's done a great job you know, building that program the, the right way uh, with confidence and toughness and physicality. They got a, the best player, um, arguably, is their quarterback. You know, he's a great leader. Everything goes through him. Uh, really tough guy. Uh, they did a great job in the transfer portal. They lost a couple of receivers in the transfer portal, and they they got a, a couple of junior college players, and one and four in particular. Uh, got good, strong, big physical backs. They're committed to the run game. And the, well, probably the best coached part of their team is the offensive line. Head coach is an offensive line coach, and uh, they know exactly what they're doing. They make uh, very few mistakes. They're usually in position to uh, keep themselves out of harm's way, if you will, in regards to um, what you're doing on defense. Uh, they know how to attack all the fronts and uh, coverages and uh, your pressures, how to pick it up. They do a really nice job not exposing themselves to a lot of negative plays. And they, they're in a lot of tight games um, a year ago, and this was a tight game. Uh, they missed some opportunities. They snapped the ball over the quarterback's head on fourth and goal at the one. 
and uh, hit a wide, had a guy wide open on the five yard line, and he he dropped it, dropped it dead to right, and uh, which was a, a touchdown, a walk in touchdown, and then they missed a chip shot field goal to to begin the game. Uh, so there's 17 uh, points of an 18 point deficit. Uh, always always judge a team too, but okay, who they play, you know, what is that team about? And knowing North Texas, you know, I think that maybe was their sixth or seventh straight win. Uh, in you know, the best rushing team in in uh, in their conference is North Texas. So you always you're looking at that too. That's what UTEP faced, you know. And uh, and again, I thought that uh, you know one thing that UTEP does well is they keep try to keep the ball away from your offense. And um, so they do that again by being um, patient. Uh, knowing when to take their shots at all the, the right opportunities and they'll double move you and try to isolate you outside where you can't give guys help. And uh, guys going to have to you know, make competitive plays on the football. And then they have some ways to protect the quarterback to give time for some uh, cross-country type routes to get open. And you're like, how did he get so wide open? But they do a nice job in play design too. You know, uh, Bill Snyder is one of the best offensive minds in the history college football in my opinion and that's that's Dana's uh, that's his root system and uh, so he's he's done a nice job wherever he's been and he, he got these guys believing his, he'll, his guys will play loose and they'll play aggressive that's that's who Dana is and defensively they're really aggressive and um, they're gonna make you earn everything you get and um, so that's a, it'll be a great challenge you know for us you know uh, this is a group that, again, they, they believe in what they're doing. That's a tough loss for them, uh, but the reality is they know they were in that game, and uh, this is a great opportunity for them to go on the road and uh, build as a team. Harry? Yeah, Brett, you inherited this schedule, uh, and some of the future schedules already set, mm -hmm. but what would your ideal schedule look like? What's your scheduling philosophy, whether Big 12, SEC, doesn't matter? And also knowing that eventually TV is going to tell you who to play. Yeah. So what what do you think about the schedule now and going forward? You know, I whoever they put in front of us, because you're right. Every once in a while they might ask me my opinion, but at the end of the day they're going to do what they want to do. And I'm and so I'm not trying to uh, avoid the question. I want our guys. This is Oklahoma, you know, and playing on the biggest stage and the biggest games is is what this place um, has been used to. Uh, you know, I know what, um, having worked here for 13 years, I, I have a very clear vision for what uh, Joe Castiglione's um, philosophy is in regards to playing a marquee uh, non-conference. And, and then again, something that also is going to put people in the stands, uh, you know, from a, a non-conference standpoint. And, you know, so I'm, whatever his philosophy is, I'm in full support. I just... I try to control the controllables, and um, our job is to get our team ready to play. And, and to me, I want to be uh, in, inside out as a program. And so whoever it is, again, it's still about us. And we need to play the best version of us every week. Uh, that's what it's all about. And uh, not play to an opponent. And again, as I said before, um, uh, not whether it's a home venue or it's on the road or it's again the uniforms the time of the day the temperature this point spread all those things none of that matters it's it's got to be about us and so i really don't spend any time uh when it comes to that you know i've had some sit downs with uh with joe and and then moving forward there's things that are here in the you know the next few years will be in our future and um but i i, I love big games uh, if you look at the track record, while well, and nobody asked me if what I thought at Clemson, but um, you know we've uh, Clemson would would open up with a marquee team uh, many many years, whether it was uh, Auburn or Georgia, somebody like that, somebody on the first few games, and I think that's great for the fans, great for the players and the team. I think it's an, it creates an excitement uh, with anticipation, getting you know looking forward to the season. They're going to be excited anyway, but when you put a uh, well, whoever it is, you know, in the past we've had a Oregon or a UCLA or a uh, Ohio State or a Washington, uh, those types of teams. Those are, you know, marquee names that uh, everybody's going to be excited about. Yeah, can you talk about just the growth and just your overall confidence in the offense and defensive line heading into the season? 
Yeah, um, I, I feel really good about both of those groups. And, and again, I'm, again, my expectation is uh, that we're going to continue to get better um, as the season goes along. But I've seen uh, trust and chemistry and guys like each other. I think that's important. Uh, you know, cohesion and um, uh, confidence, aggressiveness, physicality, all those things, you know. We've had a gazillion inside uh, periods against each other. That's when, uh, you know, the receivers, it's just, it's kind of nine on, uh, you know, nine on nine there most of the time. And uh, get a chance to see uh, fundamentally and physicality, uh, you know, those things are really isolated in the run game, and that's where it all starts. And then uh, from a protection standpoint and a pass rush standpoint, uh, we're uh, protecting the quarterback. has been really good, um, what I've seen, all fall camp, and uh, still working on, uh, you know, developing as a as a front four in regards to rushing a passer. But guys, we got some guys that can do it, and um, again, anticipate uh, them improving as the season goes along. Do you feel good about the depth? I think we got good quality depth. You know, uh, when I. <clears throat> Like we have comparable players uh, playing next to each other. I don't think it's just a huge drop off uh, with that second group of players um, across the board, both sides of the of the ball. Brian, I'm going to ask about one of your guys at the cheetah position, but not about the position itself. But Justin Harrington, mm -hmm. you've spoken about the work he's done on the field since the spring to now, but as far as the conversations you have with him when he returned to the program and the progress you've seen from him as a member of this program, what, what has that been in, in the time since? Well, I asked him to come back with um, humility and um, expecting nothing, you know, and to be about the work. You know, that's the way um, that I encouraged him to earn the, the trust and respect of his teammates, and he's done that. You know, he's over-delivered in that regard. Uh, he's got a can-do attitude. He's been high energy. Uh, he can run all day. He's got great endurance. Uh, he's got a good skill set. He's aggressive. He can run. He's got good length. Uh, he's hungry and eager for his opportunity. And so there's just refinement, you know, uh, that, you know, he's having to learn. Um, and where we have him playing, you know, he was a corner. So learning, you know, all the intricacies of the, uh, the variety of positions that we've uh, given him. And again, he's, he's done uh, really remarkably well. But uh, and there's still some refinement there. But he's been, he's been great again. And even, uh, you know, he wasn't listed as a starter. He, you know, you don't hear anything from him. And, uh, you know, his family's reached out a couple of different times and just to, to thank us, which is just refreshing. You know, there's uh, no quote unquote expectation. Uh, and so that's fun to deal with too when you got uh, you know humble people that you're working with and again the guy was a highly recruited guy is my understanding uh, and so he's been good Time for a couple more uh, let's go to Justin Martinez hey Brad, from talking to players yesterday there were guys saying that they especially want to play well this week because it is the start of the Brent Venables era and I'm sure you don't want to make it about yourself but you talked about buying I mean I gotta imagine that's good to hear that guys are rattling behind you yeah, and again, I'm, I've been proud of our guys. They've, uh, again, we have worked incredibly hard since the moment we got here. Been no pushback. Our guys are, are anxious and eager to learn and grow and get better, improve. Uh, we've got a bunch of humble, hardworking, tough guys that have responded, uh, again, since the, the moment our staff has gotten here. And, uh, and again, as I've said before, that's an interesting you know, dynamic. This is a team that's won a lot. In, in seven straight years of finishing in the top ten in the country, uh, have had great success. You know, we had a down year last year. How many games did we win last year? We won eleven games last year. It was a down year, right? And uh, so they could be, hey man, we've been doing this. Uh, why are we changing things up? And you know, we've whatever we've done, we've been open and honest and um, very communicative. I think that's how you build trust and you build connection. Uh, so nobody's surprised. Um, here's why we're doing this. Here, I want to lay it out there for you. Nobody ha has to ask because we, I'm out in front of it that way. But uh, you know, that's great. But at the end of the day, this is their team. This is going to be about. Certainly, uh, there's responsibility lies at my feet, but at the end of the day, for the players, they need to play for each other, for 
uh, the privilege that it is to play and again play and compete to a standard um, that we've um, very clearly established. And if they do that um, with intent, doesn't mean they're going to be perfect, but if they do that um, with, with everything they got, then uh, we'll be the kind of team that we want to be uh, at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. That you've kind of seen culture play out over the offseason of fall camp, and I'm sure it might not be quite what you want it to be yet. But when you kind of look at the culture and the identity you're trying to foster at OU, what do you hope that looks like both on the offense and defensive side of the ball? Yeah, and I, and I think the, you know, the culture is the soul of everything that we do. And again, it's a culture of, of effort, you know, uncommon effort, accountability, and discipline, uh, toughness, um, selfless. I think this will be a for us to have the kind of season we want, it's got to be about sacrifice. It's going to be a season of sacrifice. And so all of those things, I could continue to go on, but um, foundationally, that's what it's about. It's relationship driven. Uh, it's trust. It's truly a brotherhood. Um, but it's have, having that selfless, you know, attitude, you know, what's best for the team, very team centered. Uh, and uh, so we've worked hard at trying to connect all those different areas and again, demand uh, some of those habits, you know, what those things look like. Our guys are not going to be surprised uh, if somebody catches a touchdown and they go spike the ball. They know exactly what's getting ready to happen. Um, they know what that intimately looks like, uh, what the uh, repercussions of something like that are. I don't expect that to happen, but um, we've created um, a lot of accountability. And there'll be uh, a lot of other things that happen um, during the course of a season that, uh, again, you have to respond to. but. Um, you know, that's what it'll, you know, look like. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Brent. Is that it? Thanks. All right. Thanks for listening. See you.